The Blue Planet. Our home. And also home to millions of other species. Fauna and flora in delicate balance. But what would happen if we neglect our natural wonderlands? This is the crisis of our generation. Can we turn the tide for a better tomorrow? We often talk about the term called climate emergency. It's a very big word, but I don't believe that it's overstated. So we can see that in our daily lives, you know, rising temperatures, rising sea levels, uh, threats to our food and water security, our supply chains. Over time, if we don't do something about it, I think it, it will be clear that there will potentially be irreversible damages. Climate change is intertwined with our natural ecosystems, and safeguarding nature is a step towards decarbonizing the planet. As you know, we are in a critical situation. The world currently is not on track to limit the temperature rise into 1.5 degrees. And you can see all around us, the number of catastrophic environmental events are increasing, the number of wildfires, floods are increasing all over the world. Experts estimate that healthy ecosystems could provide 37% of the carbon reductions needed to limit global temperature rise. This is why we have to protect them. So nature-based solution, or MBS for short, are activities that seek to promote the conservation and restoration, as well as the improved management of natural and modified environment. NBS projects seek to leverage on nature's ability to absorb and store carbon from the atmosphere, and thus reduce greenhouse gases that are contributing to climate change. Examples of MBS would be a, a forest conservation, a peatland restoration, regenerative agriculture, but also blue carbon. So these are natural systems that have been regulating the Earth's climate for millions of years. The kind of opportunity that we have now is that there is still time to reverse some of the damages that have already been done. And that's kind of what we are all kind of steering towards. Nature is our ally. In protecting the very lands affected by the climate crisis, we may stand a chance to change the narrative for good. So, how can we start? I am tree. to many friends. Through me, the earth breathes. But in the last 40 years, I have shrunk. Have you done this to me? Let me breathe so that I protect you. And so we can protect us.
trees, they are one of the most natural ways of capturing and storing carbon. They have been doing it over like centuries, thousands of years. Very economical, low-cost method. This is one of the ways which uh, we can try to fight against this uh, climate crisis. Nature actually gives us a roadmap to how we need to think about solutions to climate change. The lowest cost form of carbon capture is a tree. You're not using any energy except the energy from the sun. And photosynthesis is a pretty good carbon capture device. Plants in particular are really amazing because they can propagate and grow without very much energy at all. The average tree absorbs around 10 kilograms of carbon dioxide annually for the first 20 years. But these aren't just average trees. They're super trees. At Living Carbon, we've developed the world's first photosynthesis enhanced tree. So that's a tree that grows up to 60% faster 25% more efficient at photosynthesis and also is performing better under drought and high temperature conditions. The genetic engineering process takes about six months. The evaluation process on top of that takes about 12. Once we have established that these are our top performing genetics, then we can just propagate like any other tree. Tomasic invested in Living Carbon in early 2023, one of many investments that supports the transition to a low-carbon economy. Since then, they have created more than a million super trees, with many more in the pipeline. Right now, we've planted about 500,000 trees for our spring 2024 planting, with about 1.4 million in our inventory. That's a lot of trees ready to be planted. Now, where do we plant them? Right now, we lose about 100 million hectares per year of healthy land as a result of climate change. There's about over a billion acres of degraded forests worldwide. It's actually close to the size of Russia. And these are acres that are not naturally regenerating and are essentially idle land for landowners. So we're in a very challenging situation where maximizing productivity of marginal land is more important than ever. An area of Amazon rainforest roughly the size of a football pitch is now being cleared every minute. Earth's natural way to absorb harmful carbon dioxide, which are now being deforested. More and more species are being threatened with extinction. For living carbon, they're planting trees. They need to convince landowners that the project is a viable one. This is a good use of their land. I mean, for landowners, they, they have a multitude of options for their land. They could use it for tourism. They could use it for agriculture. So living carbon has to convince them, like, why this project works from both a sustainability and also economical perspective. This is why we must look at the way land is restored and managed. So as part of nature-based solution, one of the most effective and powerful approach is what we call improved forest management or IFM for short. Fundamentally, IFM is about increasing the harvesting cycle to allow forests to grow older and to absorb more carbon from the atmosphere. Forests are worth so much more than the timber that they store. And that is why, along with our partners at a new climate and Oak Hill Advisors, as well as other investors, we decided to establish Aurora Sustainable Lands. Home to an abundance of wildlife and protected ecosystems, more than 1.6 million acres of nature across the eastern United States is under Aurora's charge today. The improved forest management doesn't only benefit climate, but also provides broader benefit to the environment, to biodiversity, and also provides space for community to enjoy. It is this reverence for nature, our lands, and its power that has led us here. Forests play a very critical role 
in um, not only slowing land degradation, but also reversing climate change. And where we are today is that we know there is this crisis, we know the science behind it, and we know that things are not irreversibly damaged yet. Through the help of nature and our collective actions, we can make a difference for us and for future generations.